Welcome back to Microsoft uh, Flight Sim, and we are in Quad City. It's in Illinois, and uh, Tina, a uh, gal that watches my live streams and uh, evidently lives in this area and mentioned that uh, it'd be kind of nice if I flew out of this airport. So um, I am going to in a commercial jet, but before I do, I want to try out my, my newest little plane, this little sucker right here. Um, this plane is almost perfect for touring, and I'll show you why. Let's get inside. So this little booger is all window. The whole cockpit is, I mean, you can see everything. It makes it perfect for just sightseeing. Uh, it's the Sting S4, and it's just a cute little little rig here. It's got a very peculiar thing about it, though. In the back, there's what looks like a rocket launcher. And what that does, if you get into trouble, you pull that red lever down there, and it'll shoot like a rocket, a parachute out. And the parachute will bring you safely to the ground. Uh, I understand that if you do that in real life, it kind of ruins the plane, but um, it'd be better than the other alternative. So, and it's kind of cool. Let me show you a little bit. I haven't flown it much yet. I flew it one time off the uh, runway and did a 180 and landed. That, that's all I've flown it. It's pretty stable. Uh, at least it seemed to be, but we can, we can open up the canopy here. There we, there we go. Click it all the way down. And then, you know, you can step out and take a look. Isn't it cute? It's just really a cute little plane. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop this in, and we're going to do a little bit of tour of this area before I get my commercial jet out. Okay, so it's pretty simple to run. Uh, we need to turn the fuel on to start it. It's got one prop. And uh, we come down here, and we'll turn our main power on. Instruments and so the strobe and the lights and all that kind of stuff. I don't know what the auxiliary one is. Yeah, that, I don't think we need that. That's an auxiliary fuel pump, it sounds like. But I don't think we need it. I guess I could turn it on. Maybe we do to start it. But uh, here's your flaps right here. You got a choke. You got a heating system. And even the um, the foot pedals down here, you can pull these levers and the foot pedals can slide back and forth. So if you have long legs, which isn't me, uh, but some people do, you can adjust your pedals. That's kind of cool. And then um, this is cool. You got your own little pad here that you can zoom into. If you, we could take this out, I suppose. But you can zoom into this thing. Where's that attached? Down here? There we go. And this thing has everything. If you fly this plane and you leave something on and you leave, when you come back, it'll be in the condition you left it in. So, and you can, you can adjust all of that. So it's really cool if you're into realism because you have to do maintenance on this plane. Well, you don't have to. You can turn it all off if you wanted to. But... You it the the pressure in the tires, I mean everything. It, the oil you can only fly it so many miles before something happens to it. So you have to maintain all of that, and you can adjust it all. Um, sometimes you even have to overhaul the engine if it has so many miles on it. And so you can do all of that. Um, it's very precise in how it works. It's really kind of cool if you're if you're into that kind of thing. And to put it back, I think we just click right back there. So, yeah, you can set all that stuff. That's kind of cool. But I want to do this fairly quickly because I don't want to take too much time on this. So what we're going to do is I turned the fuel in on already. We're going to... not sure if I have to do that or not. I turn some kind of pump on. And then we can click the key on. Start the engine. I'm going to turn that off. And it's got it's got all your controls here that you'll need. We're gonna take this thing up for a little spin. Now, I can't find a parking brake for this thing. 
and I've checked several other videos and nobody ever says anything about the parking brake. Normally they'll say, okay, well, let's take the parking brake off and take this for a spin. But if I hit my button for parking brake, nothing happens and there's nothing underneath. There's just this handle for emergencies. I don't see any parking thing and I couldn't find any parking thing. And I was watching another guy that I watch a lot and he was talking about it and he said I, he couldn't find the parking brake. So anyway, let's, uh, let's go. So uh, if we look around here, this is called Quad City and Quad City, Mo City Mo Line is what I've seen. There's a South Mo Line and then over there is a Mo Line, 1.3 nautical miles away. So I'm assuming that's a city, but let's um, let's take off and take a little peek, see how this thing does up in the air. As I said, I didn't fly it much, but what little bit I did fly it, it seemed really stable. I don't really think I need much of a of a runway. Now you have to be careful, this thing will turn on a dime, your steering wheel, the front wheel that you use to steer it, and you can oversteer it and the, and the wheel will lock up. So you have to be careful not to oversteer. But as far as the uh, touring plane, this thing is I mean, you can just see everything. So I'm just going to take a spin around town here. Quad City International Airport, it said. Well, I think it said international. Now, Quad, that's four, right? I'm assuming there's four cities that surround this, at least. Now, on the airport itself, it says Quad, uh, quad City Moline. I might not be pronouncing Moline correctly, but... And that, I think, was over this way. Looks like it's got a river running through it. There's Mo Line. There's the airport we just took off from. We got a new update uh, yesterday, I think it was. And uh, it... There's a, an update on New Zealand. They've updated scenery and added airports and quite a little bit. I'm going to be spending some time in New Zealand checking that out in the next couple of days. So there, that airport, look, there's a clover leaf right next to the airport. That's kind of cool. Must be a lot of traffic coming in. No, there's two of them. There's one just to the right of the plane and one on the left wing. Now, I don't have this on real weather because I didn't want any clouds. It, it was cloudy here earlier. And I wanted to be able to kind of see a little bit of the city or the area. Is that some kind of store? Is that a mall of some kind? It's a beautiful little area.
There's McNeil Field. Silvis, another little town. The symbol that has like a target in the circle is usually an airstrip. And then, of course, the towns have a little... Uh, they look like skyscrapers, the icon, or tall buildings. Carbon Cliff. Oh, that sounds odd. So a lot of times when I'm flying out of these airports, I fly it like I flew out of O'Hare, uh, Chicago, the day before yesterday, and I didn't see any of the city because I just, I just got in my commercial jet and took off, and I flew to uh, Washington, Baltimore, and again when I got to Baltimore, I just got out. I didn't, I didn't actually look around. So I thought it might be a little bit uh, interesting to just take a small plane and just fly around the area so I can see exactly what uh, what's around here. What's it look like? What's the country like? just got back from movie theater I went to see the new Ant-Man movie my son um, wanted to see it for his birthday today's his birthday so uh, we went and saw the new Ant-Man movie I was surprised a little bit I enjoyed it uh, I liked the Ant-Man movies um, the first one was good the second one was, eh, it was okay and I'd heard so much about the third one being a, a no good that I didn't want to really go see it I was surprised because it wasn't as bad as they said. And so that kind of surprised me in a good way. So, um, you know, it wasn't the best movie. I mean, the plot was a little thin and, you know, it's typical nowadays movie. Is that a dam? I'll have to ask somebody that knows if that's a dam to the right. That area over there. Well, it's a bridge going across the river, but does it block the water? Maybe not. Maybe maybe not. Okay, well, I don't want to spend a lot of time here because I got a flight to make, and uh, I think it's at least an hour, hour and a half flight. So, let me just run over this. What What is this? Some kind of industrial area. Rock Island Arsenal. Oh, that sounds... That sounds, I don't know how that sounds, an arsenal. Wow. I knew there was a lot of crime in Illinois, but I didn't know you had to have an arsenal. What is that? Look at that bridge, it's weird looking. Let me go down and look at that. Whoops, wrong button, there we go. Now see, you can see everything. This this plane is so nice for for sightseeing. All right, what is that? Why is that bridge covered like that? Five hundred. That's kind of strange looking. Huh. All right, I'm gonna go back and land. If I can find the airport again. That's a pretty area. Nice and green. Lots of bridges. I guess there'd have to be if you're going to cross a river, right? Looks like a, a sewage plant down there. What is that? Looks a little stanky. That is a sewage pan plant, isn't it? All right, where's my airport? Wasn't on the other side. Was it on the other side? Uh, 
Blackhawk Township. Let's see if I can find my airport. I've lost it. Is that it over there? Yeah, that's it over there. Quad City International. It was an international. Yeah, I'm kind of pushing the engine a little bit. Let me back it off a little. Yeah, I know I've mentioned before, but I don't care where you go. There's pretty country. It 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 every place you go there's something I mean there's some ugly parts to some places Idaho has some ugly parts that look like the face of the moon uh, but then it's got some very very beautiful parts to it as well uh, evidently there's a lot of mining done in Idaho and I'm just going to pick a runway and hit it and hope I don't meet a uh, jumbo jet just trying to take off. I don't have live traffic on. So, again, once I get better at the game, I'll probably do that. this little plane, the runway, plenty wide enough. We are down. I didn't even need to parachute. Yeah, the only thing you have to be careful of is, like I say, don't don't twist the when you're turning. Don't twist too hard, because the the that front wheel will go uh, more than it should, and in, and I've had it lock up on me a couple of times. Yeah, this thing runs pretty pretty good. It runs pretty good. It's easy to fly, very stable. All right, we're back where we started. And again, I don't know if, if there's a if there's a parking brake. I don't know where it's at. All right, we're down. There you go. So we're back in Quad uh, Quad City International. It's um, it's in Illinois, Moline. Uh, when you look the, the airport up, it says Quad City International Moline. So, and there's Moline there, and there's a South Moline. And uh, I did I did just take a little tour in a small plane of the area, just a quick little five minute thing, uh, just to take a look around. I turned the real weather off because um, it was quite cloudy here when I flew earlier this morning. And um, and I wanna be able to see stuff when I do the recordings. Um, I, I've been leaving live weather on when I'm flying by myself, but then thing of it is, like I made a, a two hour flight 
yesterday and it was so cloudy I had to go up to something like 20 25,000 feet to get over the clouds and then for two hours all I saw was a blanket of clouds you, there was no break in the clouds and it could be you know for two hours it'd be a little boring to watch so uh, I've cut the um, I've cut the weather down and just put uh, partially cloudy on so we just have you know it's just partially cloudy it's it's not real weather but anyway let's get going I'm not going to go through a lot of the getting the fuel stuff. I just want to get the flight going. So we're going to do a quickie here. Let's go down. First of all, let's give ourselves some power. We got external power. You saw that there's a uh, generator right outside the plane. So we're going to make use of it. But first, let's turn our batteries on. Turn these on. That's going to take about seven minutes for those to heat up. Turn the cruise supply air on. Let's put on the strobe light and the nav lights. Uh, we'll put on the passenger lights because we're going to be loading up. The emergency lights will arm. Uh, I will turn a little bit of light level up here. And then uh, while we're waiting We'll do a quick look over the plane while we're waiting for the... Yeah, we got seven minutes to go for those GPSs to heat up. The, well, I do have another plane that I've flown. I think I've talked about it. It's called the Phoenix. With that one, there's ways of going in. I think the Boeing has the same thing. I may be mistaken on that. But there's a way to go in and actually turn the, that to an instant on. But uh, I don't know if there's one on this plane or not to do that. So I just let this go. I just turn it on right away and wait for it to warm up. But I mean, we got other things to do. Let's turn some power up here. Brighten that computer up a little bit. Since I don't have real weather on, I probably won't need the lights up like that, but um, we'll put them up anyway. Let's turn this on. Get that heated up. Let's go down here and flip these on. All right, our cockpit door is unlocked and open parking brake is on the trim auto trim is on the rudd trim the rudder nose and nose left nose right that kind of thing the um the weather radar is off the wind shear is off for now let's look at our passenger list here so we're going to be going from Quad City, Illinois to Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota. I've not been there. My, my father's generation was from Minnesota, and I'm pretty sure he lived in the St. Paul area for a while. I know he, I know he was in St. Cloud, and uh, I did, not knowing much about Minneapolis, I'm not quite sure if St. Cloud is close to St. Paul. Maybe I'll find out, uh, but at this moment, I don't, I don't know. So let's import that. We can import that here, but I don't think we can import it here until I get my uh, radar up. So that's what we're waiting on. Once I get the radar up, then I think I can then transfer that over. So let's go to the center here. These are already on. These are usually on. Or did I turn them on? No, I think I did because I remember saying something about the computer lights. So I did that, I did that. Okay, so uh, I think that we can go to the iPad and start the fueling process. So let's do that. We're gonna get that from our flight plan. Payload, that from the flight plan. Oh, fewer passengers today. 122 is all. Okay. That was instant load. 
so I shouldn't have to wait on that. So right now I'm just waiting for those to come on. I think I'm going to go get me a cup of tea. By the time I come back, those will be lit up. So I'll be right back. Okay, looks like our GPSs are up. I'm waiting for my tea to brew. It won't take long. But let's, uh, let's see if we can get our work done here. All right, let's go in here. get the computer to send us some information okay so we're flying out of Illinois KMLI that's our departure and we're leaving on nine runway nine and we don't have a SID or um, is that for transfer I think it is I think it needs transfer so we don't have that so we'll just insert it we do have a discrepancy we'll take care of that in a minute uh, let's go to our arrival we're going to KMSP in Minnesota and we're going to be landing on 12 right so that's that one right there and let's see if we have a star yes we do this one right here blue M4 we got blue M4 we don't have a v via but we do have a a trans and it is MN Oso something like that let's see if we can find it that one right there so we'll select that and insert it that's all we should need it's a very short trip well it's not short short but it's not very long either not like it's not like a three hour trip or anything like that so let's take care of some of these uh, discontin discontinuities we're going to uh, clear that one right uh, right there all right and then go down the road here all right we have a problem here uh, from Doli to Zesty the computer doesn't know how to get there so he's telling us that we have to enter some manual thing in there but we actually don't. We can just clear that out and try to hook Dolly up to Zesty. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take that out and then we'll take that out and that should connect those two together. And then we're at our destination. So we're going to come up top here and double check that. So it looks like at 9 we're going to be going at 180. So been I've been having a lot of that lately let's take a look at the rest of the trip oh hang on all right let's go up here and set this to plan and then we'll come down and run through this. Okay. Well, it looks pretty clear so far. And see, I told you it's not very long. There's Dolly and Zesty. So when we get to the other end, we're going to have another 180 that'll bring us back into the into the airstrip so but everything looks good so we'll go with that and let's see I've already loaded the uh, the fuel in the passenger so we should be able to come in here 
and hit our second page here and put in our weights. Let's do that real quickly. 55.1 five and 25.0. By five point one two five point zero, and then our fuel is going to be fifty four twenty eight. So five four point two got that in. If we go here, we can put in one flap. We're going to be using one flap for takeoff, and then let's get our V1, VR, and V2. All right. I think that's basically all I need. I'm trying to I'm trying to do this as quickly as I can from memory, and uh, and we'll see we'll see how how it goes. Um, let's pop up here. We're going to go. I think my uh, my height on this plan was 18,000. I didn't want. I'm not. I'm trying to keep it down low so I can sight see. So it's it's not. It, it's we're we're doing flight sim. We're not doing reality. Um, like I've said in the past, one of these days I might go for a little bit more realism. I tell you what, let's just pop it right up to 18. And then we can always come down if we have interesting things to see. So let's let's do that with that 18. Let's uh, change our barometer if it needs to be changed. And it doesn't. It's okay. Uh, let's set this up to arc. We got our our uh, flight directors are both on. I think everything's okay up here. Let's. Um, double check up here what we've got all right we're going to be starting the engines so let's uh, let's start the APU wait for three seconds get the start make sure that everything's hunky-dory down here we should see some activity there's the flap is open we see some activity happening here Wait till that flap closes again, and then we can. Then we'll have some uh, air to bleed. Let's go out and double check it. You can see it warming up. All right, that's going to give us our internal power until we get the engines going, and it also the air bleed starts the engines uh, turning. So that that's what we're doing here. Let's go back inside. Uh, since we're going to be starting engines, I am going to kick the beacon on so I don't forget. Flight attendants, arm doors, and cross check. We're going to go down here. I've already verified some things down here, um, but let's get ready to start the engines. Now, with that APU going, I could actually turn the uh, the external power off, but I need to do a, a pushback here. So let's see if we can get that done. I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to cut that power. Let me double check. Yeah. You see it's ready for the engine, so that means that I can turn off the uh, external power. All right, let's uh, turn the fuel pumps on. All right, let's call for a pushback. All right, he's lining up to push us back. 
I'm going to be pushed back to the left there, and that will give me a straight out here, hopefully. As soon as he gets hooked back and he starts moving, I'll start the engines. Okay, let's see. We need to go up above and turn the bleed on. That'll give us air to start the engines. And we've got that switch on there. We can kick this engine up. And hopefully it'll start. There we go right there. We'll wait to that for 24. And then we'll kick the second engine in. We can go outside and look at that. You'll see the engine starting to roar. All right, now I'm going to... I'm gonna. Let me get to that, this thing here, and straighten it out a little. All right, so I'm pretty sure, yeah, we can kick the second engine in and get it running. Okay, it's it's moving. Go outside, take a look, and it's starting to turn. I don't think it's going to hurt anything if my wing is over that grass. So I'm going to hit that left again check our engines they're starting to wind up all right let's stop this guy we're gonna stop hit our parking brake detach the tub the tug He's pulling away. We got plenty of room to get out now. Let's check our engines. Oh boy. Yeah, they're taking off. I think we're okay. That one should be. I may have missed the available. I think we're I think we're hot. Okay. So let's see we're going to 9 did I say? I think it's right in front of me. I think this is 9 right here, but let's double check. Nope, that's 27. So maybe nine's the other end. Right, nine is the other end. So all I have to do is bring, bring my plane straight out to this road and straight down. So we're, we're good to go. And um, we'll double check everything else before we actually get to the runway. So first of all, let me make sure where the throttle's at. All right, I want that throttle back to there. Got some new strategies I'm going to try today on takeoff. I've had some issues. Oh, I overturned that one. I have some issues 
in the past with my takeoffs and it has to do with my throttle and I still haven't figured out exactly uh, I've looked it up and found out how to calibrate it but what you're supposed to do and what actually get, happens are two different things um, it all comes down to your throttle that you that you have one of the throttles I have the expensive one the Warthog it actually has two throttles for two engines and there are some planes that have four engines so then what do you do you know um, this particular throttle only has one control the plane has two so I've got the two hooked to the one but they're not calibrated the one is not calibrated for two so you have to go in and kind of monkey with it and I just I've tried and I got it pretty good but I don't have it exact and so I still have a little bit of trouble with that uh, throttle locking in where it's supposed to be by the way we're flying Delta today I've only got, uh, well, I've got four that I fly. I've got Alaska. Wait a minute, I've got more than that. I've got Alaska that I fly. Um, I've got uh, JetBlue. I've got Delta. I've got American Airlines. And then I have one that's from uh, Britain. EasyJet, I think it's called. I just noticed that there's a lot of uh, people across the pond there that fly easy jet I, I think it's uh, it's a, um, a less expensive airline to fly over there so you know it's some of these places they they get kind of uppity I'll only fly Delta or you know first class I'm a first class kind of a kind of a uh, person I want to be treated like a king on the airline. All right, this is our takeoff point. We stop it right here, put the parking brake on, and we've got a little bit of work to do. Let's double check the barometer, and it's, it's still good. We're gonna jump down to the engines here uh, we're gonna. We want one flap. Let's put that up. We're gonna lock and close and lock the cockpit. Let's see. Let's turn that um, weather radar on. We'll turn the shear on to auto. Once we do this, the the uh, stewardesses will come on. Whoops. There we go. Flight attendants, please prepare for takeoff. All right, let's double check the lights. Okay, we got smoke, no smoking, seatbelt lights are on. Uh, let's, let's kick the rest of our lights on. Again, in America, now this one has two. It has taxi, which I didn't have on, I should have. And it's got um, takeoff. And so you can, we're putting it in takeoff. Um, this one has a retracted lights and you turn them on and then, uh, or unretract them and then and then uh, turn them on, which I have done. Um, anything else? Yeah, let's turn that off and that off. I've been having trouble, and I'm not the only one, I looked it up, that when I come in on the glide path, the computer's telling me, the, the, the plane itself is saying, terrain, terrain, you know, uh, and screams at you. It shouldn't, I'm in the glide path, the computer's bringing me in, so um, you can turn these things off if you want, and that turns those, those warnings off so it doesn't bug you too bad. By that point, I know if I'm gonna crash or not, you know what I mean? So I don't have to be screamed at that I'm crashing. <laughs> anyway, so I can turn those off. It must be a thing, because other people are turning it off too, so there you go, it's not just me. All right, let's see, anything else that I'm forgetting? Let's see, I did the flaps. Um, 
let's turn the chrono on and also here and I think I'm ready okay today I'm going to be trying something different I, I normally go to climb um, this is cruise actually is what that is and then there's um, what was the other one called the reflex okay I'm gonna go up to flex that's what uh, I've seen a lot of people flying in flex let me turn that off so I'm gonna fly in flex today so we're gonna we're gonna jump up into flex and lock it in take the brake off Bob's your uncle my rotate was 170 something if I'm not mistaken it'll show me Hundred and eighty. I had less less passengers today. All right, so we got an, a nice climb there. I'm gonna take the uh, put the landing gear up, take the flap off. Nice. All right, so autopilot came right on going to kick us around. Let me see here. Let's take that out so I can see it. but not very fast. Okay, I didn't have the altitude locked in. I thought I had. It wasn't. So I'm climbing a little bit faster now, thank goodness. mistake there I didn't catch it fast enough and so our turn is a little bit more than it needs to be to get back onto our flight map but that's okay we'll see a little bit more farm farmland out here We're 11,000. We're coming up. We're okay. It's fine. So we're heading back to our flight plan. And once we get a little bit further here, it'll go back to the right a little bit to, to line up with that. You can see it right here. There's the line we want to be on, and we had to come around to get to it. We'll get there. Thousand feet. When we get to 18, I'm going to kick the throttle back to uh, the cruise level. Okay, 
I've got auto throttle on, so that should be controlling our throttle. But let me let me show you this. I might be wrong on this. I've got two marks there. One is the flex, and one is the CL, which could either be climb or cruise. I'm assuming that's your cruise. So once you get to you know a certain level, um, I don't I don't think my throttle needs to be kicked in that high. So. I'm going to kick it down and lock it into that one. All right. So we're 18,000 and still climbing. That's... Uh, okay, it came out of auto. It came out of auto because um, because I took control. So let's kick the autopilot back on. And that dot right there means that we're back on automatic um, altitude. So that should bring us hopefully back down. Yeah, see it's coming down right here. So we'll go back down to 18 now that I've set that again. Let's kick that on so I can see what's going on. And I missed what the pilot said. Oh, shoot, let's kick this off. We don't need that, we've got engines now. So um, we're over 10,000 feet so we can turn the landing lights off. All right, I'm gonna turn them on and just not, um, let's see, what's that, is that? Yeah, there, okay. That takes them from being retracted. They're on, they're out there, but they're not on, and we're not in uh, takeoff anymore. So we can bring this down. Runway lights, we don't need those. We'll leave the wing lights on and the nav on. Strobe. And uh, oh, let's uh, let the passengers loose. down to 18,000. Right, we've got uh, 74 miles to our first waypoint, which is uh, just past Cedar Rapids and uh, just before Waterloo. It's, it's kind of a shorter flight. When we get to Waterloo, we'll be about a third of the way. So, sit back, enjoy some scenery. Okay, you guys enjoy the scenery for a minute. I'm gonna go get my cup of tea.
righty, I'm back with a hot cup of tea. Did I miss anything? We're 53 miles away from our first waypoint. I think we just passed uh, Cedar Rapids. It, I think that was Cedar Rapids back there. Because we're supposed to fly right over the top of it. I think that's it right there. Although it could be right in front of us as well. It's hard to tell from up here. Because you can't see the little markers. I think I'm going to come down so I can see a little bit more. I'd like to see the country. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, come, let's bring this thing down. Whoop, wrong way. I'm going to bring it down to 10 for now. Eastern Iowa Airport over there. Oh, I would have liked to have known if that's Cedar Rapids. There's, there's, uh, there's towns everywhere here, so it's hard to tell. And I can't, I can't remember how big Cedar Rapids is. Eastern Iowa Airport. I guess I could look that up and see if it's by Cedar Rapids. There's Marion. We're coming down so these things are McBride. Huh. Chain Lakes. That's an interesting name. It's amazing how green places are. Vinton Veteran Memorial. There's Canton. Wow, it doesn't even look like a town, does it? Where the sign is, Canton. There's a town right there, a little town. Could move the camera, get sick. All right, we got 34 miles uh, to our waypoint, first waypoint. And I'm pretty sure Cedar Rapids had to be back there just before I came in with my cup of tea. So I probably just missed it. Yeah, the clouds I have up right now, I don't think they move. When you when you put the clouds in, um, they're, I think they're static. I don't know that for a fact, but I think they are. Because you can choose whether you want just a few clouds, whether you want... Um, let's see what the choices are. You can have real live weather, and then, then the weather comes and goes. You know, the clouds are moving. But if we check the weather here... I've got it on few clouds. You can set it on live weather. And yeah, that's why I didn't have it on live weather. And did you notice the plane moving? There's there's some wind up here and if I was in live weather. And then you can put few clouds on or you can put uh, clear skies or scattered clouds. Wow. Wow. That's a lot of clouds. 
there's Jackson. Um, or you can put broken clouds, which is more clouds. And then high level clouds. Or you can just do overcast. Usually when I do this, I just put it on uh, just a few clouds. All right, that's enough messing with the weather. What's happening here? We're at 10,000 feet and it's just leveling off, it looks like. Every time I'm flying now, it's a gamble. It doesn't matter whether I'm flying for uh, an hour trip, uh, an hour and a half, a two hour trip, you know, depending where I'm going. If I'm going from, say, Chicago to New York, that's about an hour and a half. Um, but, it's, but it's a gamble. Uh, I can have a perfect takeoff. I can have everything running well and, and cruising and viewing and then crash at the end. I mean, it's like... And I don't often actually crash. It's just generally somehow I kind of mess up the landing. And it's, it, is it disappointing? Yeah, a little bit. It sure makes you feel good when you, when you really hit one, though. You know, when you, really, when you really do it right, it feels so good. I tell you, um, I still get a little bit nervous when it comes to, to the landing part. But I'm not scared like I used to be. I, I used to be, get, I'd get real tense and just... And that's not good because that was some of the problem I was having was was holding that that stick so tight that I wasn't able to make the adjustments I need to make. You need to you need to kind of relax and just gently move the thing. And I was holding it so tight, and then I would get nervous at the last and think I needed to really pull the noise up, nose up, and I would just yank it back. And, and of course that makes you bounce because. If you pull the nose back, the plane wants to climb. And if you're trying to get it down on the ground, that's not good. So your your uh, tires will hit, and then you'll take off again. And that's where the bouncing comes from. Genos Genosco? No, Genosia. Interesting. That sounds familiar. I don't know why. That Trer Mun. Pochfield. So the few the few clouds that I actually usually put in to me uh, gives it a little bit more realism and it doesn't cover you can still see things because I don't think the clouds move and so your plane goes over them and you can see what was underneath them. So you can see, still sightsee and have the, the realism of some clouds, which is kind of nice. And like I said, when I'm flying by myself, I usually have the real weather on. <clears throat> that makes it interesting, having the real weather on, because you're getting knocked around if it's windy. Uh, if it's really cloudy, you can't see, and you have to use the instruments to land. It makes it more fun and exciting. Is it scary? Yeah, but... Some people like to be scared. That's what they have horror movies for. Alright, in, in four miles, we're going to be making the right bank. Uh, that'll be our first waypoint. Blackhawk Down, that's the name of the town, Blackhawk?
Beasley Field. Triple J. That sounds like a ranch. Triple J Ranch. Our next waypoint is 25 miles. It's called Kicker. Oh, so we just passed Waterloo. So Waterloo would be off that way. We're not that we're not that close to it. So we may not have seen it. But Waterloo would be back in there. It wasn't directly in our path. We got a little uh, place called Mason City coming up. I'm, I'm assuming, because the map I'm looking at, it has my route on it, and every city is not lit up, but just certain cities, so I'm assuming that the cities that are lit up on the map are probably of a certain size, like Des Moines, Waterloo, Cedar Rapids, Iowa City, I've heard of all those. Uh, Dubuque, the, I see Dubuque. Those are all cities I've heard of. Rochester. So there's lots of little cities, but you don't see them on the map unless you uh, get a different map and get a little bit closer. go in for a minute and look at the flight plan. We just passed that. We're coming up to Kicker. We got Opie. And we got Lazy and then Blue M. I'm trying to see where I need to start coming down. So we're supposed to be at 16 at Lazy and we're supposed to be down to 11 by Blue M and 10 by Hammer. And again, it's a simulator. I'm simming this trip. I'm not doing it as as real as I could. If I was, I was supposed to be at 24,000 feet right here at Opie. And those little purple star things, these are restrictions. These, you're required to be at 16,000 feet at Lazy and 280 uh, nautical miles per hour so there's a speed restriction and an altitude restriction the same here the, the speed is 280 the altitude is 1100 uh, this one doesn't have an airspeed but it does have an, uh, an altitude so once I really get good at this I'm going to be trying to do more realistic stuff and pay atten paying, paying attention to that stuff. So we got Farbo instead of Fargo. Now at Elko, 250 miles at 10,000. So a little bit slower speed. Then we're coming down uh, by, Sa by Savage, we're coming down. So 9,000, 8,000 at Greek. And then there's our D cell. And then 4,000 at Zesty. And by the time we get to the airport, we're supposed to be down to 880. 880 feet. So I'm going to start coming down when we get to... I'm thinking uh, that I'll start coming down um, by far boat so that I can be down. Well, I'm already at 10. So maybe by Elko, I'll start coming down. That's actually, that's, looking at the map, if I wait till Elko, Elko, that's pretty, that's, that's pretty uh, close to the airport beams. You notice what I'm not saying 
is how far it is from Fargo to Elko to Savage. By the time I get to Lazy, then these things are real close to each other. They're just a few miles apart. So I'm thinking that I need to be by Lazy, I need to be down a little bit lower. So I'm gonna I'm gonna watch that. I'll decide when the time comes. Alright, we just missed Mason City. There's West Point. Allison Municipal. There was a place called Mason City, but it was, it's off to the left, but it, we're not we're not directly over that, so we may or may not be able to be close enough to see it. There's cold water. But Mason City would have been out here somewhere. So, um, just for edification, the reason that I'm pointing out these things that I'm seeing is twofold. One, for me, I've not been in this part of the country. I think it's interesting to see little towns and what they're named. And, and uh, in my mind, I can fantasize about what that town's like, how they've come with that name. And then the second part is there may be somebody, and this is wishful thinking because I don't think a lot of people watch my stuff but there may be somebody that sees this and says I live right there you flew over you know my town and that might be interesting for somebody else and so that's why I'm kind of pointing these things out and not only that it gives me something to do while I'm flying instead of just sitting here like a lump sucking on tea called Scott. Now see, this is where I'm supposed to be at 24,000 feet. What's that mean? Well, we're 30 miles from Opie. Opie. I could be I could be a little sad my channel um, a couple of years ago I put a, a new video up and I'd have two three hundred views on it in you know in a day or two 
I'm lucky to get 10 or 20 views now. It's, you know, I still have over 5,000 subscribers, though. It's just that my views just aren't getting, nobody's watching. And it's a little sad, but then again, I do this because I enjoy it. I like making videos, I like playing games, and I like to think that somebody's, you know, watching and getting some enjoyment out of it. There are days when I think, you know, it's not worth it, it's not worth my time anymore, and there, there's going to come a time where I just won't be able to do it anymore, and I don't think that time's very far away. Um, even my live streams just a couple months ago I'd do a live stream and have 100 views and now I'm lucky to get 40 48, 50 live stream views which is unusual for live streaming it could be the game I'm playing because I'm playing uh, Farmer's Dynasty and I was asked to play it so that's why I'm live streaming I'd already done a playthrough on it with videos a few years ago.
everything back up. Let's get in here and look at our autopilot and uh, let's bring it down a couple, a couple thousand and then put it back in auto. And that'll, that'll slowly, gently bring me down. There's Glenville. Land. Okay. What do we got here? We're at, uh, what are we? We're, we're at 8,000 feet. I may have to come lower to get out of these clouds. I don't want to be right in the clouds. I don't know how low those clouds go, though. Too far out to get too low. There's Clark's Grove. Look at these places over here. There's Hollandale. Uh, Geneva Township. That sounds like a village. And there's Geneva. Interesting. So we get a little bit of a body of water below us here. I bet that's bigger lake than, it, than you think because we're so high up. Okay, we're coming up to Lazy. We got less than 10 miles. And um, we're not, it, it's not a turn, but we've got Lazy coming up. We've got Blue M, Hammer, and Farbo, and they're just a few miles from each other. So we're getting we're getting close to our destination. So I may actually come down another another thousand. Whoops! I don't want to be on that. Darn it! Didn't want to do that. Put it back on auto. Hey, we're at the summit. What's that off to the left? Is that uh, Ellendale? I, I want to know who Ellen is because they named the town after her. <laughs> and the engines just shut themselves off.
Yeah, one of the one of the reasons why I decided to start playing this game is that you've really got to study. You've got to know stuff to fly these planes. You have to you have to read about procedures. You have to be doing one, two, three things at the same time, watching out for that. And um, I was looking for something to stimulate my mind. And playing the games does that too. Gaming, in my opinion, uh, keeps my mind sharp or sharper. If you're going to be good at a game, or you know, especially the kind of games I play, and not not the simulation ones, but some of the role-playing ones, um, there's interesting things to know about the game, the people that you're playing, the characters that they that you develop, that kind of thing. And I get into the stories and stuff. What the heck is that? I don't know how to pronounce that. Atwana. Is the Q silent? Or is that a Q? Oh my god. It's an airport. A Wat Watna? There's a town and an airport. So yeah, I wanted something to kind of stimulate my mind. I can tell. I can tell that just in the last couple of years that I'm not as sharp as I used to be. I uh, find myself, when I'm making videos, stuttering a little bit more, not as confident as I was just a few years ago. My voice is kind of cracking a little bit. <clears throat> it's not as strong as it used to be. Now, my wife will disagree with you on that one. Uh, and my son. My son is in an adjoining room, and he says he can hear every word I say. I am kind of loud. Scorpion and I used to laugh about that because he's kind of loud, and we're both kind of loud. Clinton Falls. So we've passed Lazy a few miles ago, just a couple miles, and we're only five miles from Blue. So these little waypoints are getting closer. So we're going to be coming into our landing area pretty soon. Underland airstrip.
Sky Harbor Residential Air Air Park. What does that mean? Residential Air Park? Do they live at the air park? Little travel trailers all over Bridgewater. Uh, little travel trailers all over. Okay, we're at Elko. We're going to be coming in. We're going to be making some left-hand curves here. I want to come down a little bit more. And not wait till the last minute. Now, if I, if I crash the plane at the end of this trip, I'm going to be PO'd, right? And so I'll probably delete the, the, the video, and you'll never hear anything I just said. And so I won't have to worry about people making fun of me because I'm an old fart. Calling me stupid because I'm old, don't know nothing. Air Lake. But like I said, I'm not too worried because nobody watches my videos now anyway, so as nobody can see what I just said. We're actually supposed to be uh, 10,000 feet right now. I do have the speed though. Let me see, what's the speed? Yeah, I'm right at 250 and that's the uh, restriction. There's a speed restriction right here of 250. Now, there could be many reasons for a speed uh, restriction there's Eureka uh, it could be a noise restriction so there could be that they have a noise restriction because we're getting uh, close to the airport and we'll be coming down and so there are places that will put in a noise restriction well how do you control that by cutting the engines back because the engines is what that's what makes the noise so they'll put a speed restriction in to kind of dampen the noise a little and of course, if you were a smart ass, you'd say, well, why do you have a house by an airport? You know? And I know about that because I live across from the grade school. And people hear me complaining about people parking in my driveway all the time, dropping their kids off. That's exactly what they'll say. Is, well, why'd you buy a house next to a school then? Well, good question, but... Sometimes you don't always uh, get to choose, especially now. You don't. You don't just to say, I, you know, I want that house. Uh, well, maybe it, maybe it's selling for too much. Maybe you don't have the credit. Maybe you don't have the income to make the payments. Uh, sometimes you have to settle for something else because it's close to your work and it's affordable. And it's, and it's nice enough. It's not your dream home, but it's nice enough. You make do. Uh, it's getting to the point now where people can't afford a damn house. I don't know what they're gonna do. You know, the wages aren't very good. Houses are just going absolutely nuts in price. I don't know how young people will ever be able to afford a house anymore without, without starting a, a, a commune. All right, we're coming up to Greek, and at Greek we're going to start into, uh, there's St. Paul, I think that's our airport. Let me uh, bring this puppy down a little bit more. Okay, we're at 5,000 feet, I'm going to come down to four, and we're going to start getting ready here. Uh, Again, if you if you remember the uh, route, it's got me in a in a 180 degree turn at the airport. So you can see it right here. We're, that's my plane right there. We're coming here, and then we're gonna. There's our descent right there. We come around in a straight shot into the airport. So uh, so yeah, things are getting exciting now.
Okay, we're at Doli. Or we're heading to Doli. 11 miles. And um, we're just reaching our, our descent marker. Okay, so let's get in here and do a little bit of work. We need to uh, make sure that is armed. We need to, what else do we need to do? We need to go up and make sure our, our uh, brakes are on. So let's, uh, let's pop up here and make sure we've got the auto brake on. Uh, make sure our barometer is correct, and it is. All right, so we're gonna get our descent here any minute. Okay, this is our last swing. It's going to be tight because it's not coming down. Why am I not coming down? Uh-oh. I can't see. All right. I'm going to kick the landing gear down. Five minutes. Please prepare for landing. our strip. We better start coming down. Two thousand five hundred. should be on the glide slope and it should be locking in. We need to bring our speed down just a little bit.
Yes, if you notice that my computer is stuttering pretty bad, this might be a little bit harder to do than I anticipated. But we're going to St. Paul, Minnesota. All right, I'm going to put a flap down, see if I can slow it down a little bit. Get it down to closer to 180, I'll put a second flap down. 1,000. stuttering and maybe bringing me down a little bit low dang it the stuttering I can't tell if I'm dropping or not um, it feels like I'm a little low but then 500 400. Oh, the stuttering is bad. 400. 300. The stuttering is bad. 300. 200. <laughs> 100. 50. 40. 30. 20. Retard. 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 Alright, we're, we're okay. Retard. 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 It's the stuttering is making it hard for me to steer. Retard. But I didn't bounce. Retard. That was almost a Retard. perfect landing. Retard. It's just the stuttering is hurting my steering. Retard. Uh, because I don't know how hard to steer. Retard. Alright. Yeah, I went a little bit farther down the runway than I needed to. Yeah, I can't wait to get a new computer just for this game. I mean, my computer is perfectly fine for most games that I play, but this one, just a little bit of a problem. Now, I don't know where I can park, so I'm just going to take one of these spots here. And there's there's some baggage carriers over there. Let's run over there. Let's see what we got for parking. just going to park right here, put our brakes on, and let me, let me get this throttle in, locked in idle, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go, okay, hey, that was a good landing, I don't, the stud, the stuttering really hurt me, because the landing was fine, landing was perfect, I didn't bounce at all, but once I was on the ground, it was the steering, because I was trying to keep it in the center, and you have to steer it, especially if there's any kind of wind. And um, and when it stutters like that, I've got my I'm turning to the left, and I don't know how hard to turn. And then it stutters, and the next thing you know, you're jiving to the left when you didn't mean to. So that that's why I was a little bit shaky on that runway, was the stuttering. But overall, it was a perfect landing. Couldn't get any better. 
well for me for me it was good and I'm gonna stick to it now once you're landed uh, you would find yourself you know a, a place to unload the the, the uh, people and I don't know if I can do that let me run up here and see if I can link to uh, most of these airports they don't have a spot big enough for these planes but let me see I'm gonna run up here and see if I can whoa slow down Yeah, you'd think this would be a big enough spot here, but I don't think it is. Yeah, I don't think it is. So... Yeah, I'm supposed to be on that yellow line, aren't I? Oh, God. I missed it by a mile. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to make it. It's, but, but again, if you notice that the lines, my wings go over the lines. I'm not, I'm not supposed to be in a spot this small. So, anyway, I'm just going to park it here. And if I can do it, I can do it. If I can't, I can't. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is um, I'm going to pretend like I'm taking off to another on another route. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to turn our APU on. Wait three seconds. Kick that on. See if we got it running. Yep, flap is open. We'll wait until the flap open goes off. So that was about a 60 minute flight. We're at 66 minutes now. So that wasn't a bad flight, about an hour in the air. I mean, it took me prep time and stuff like that, but in the air it was 60. So the perfect flight, if you ask me. All right, so let's, um, we got the APU, APU running, let's kick our lights off. already off now we'll leave that on wing light come down we're gonna be we're gonna be shutting the the engines off let's uh, let's take the uh, passenger lights down and um, the APU is running so we can actually uh, stop the engines so let's uh, put our flaps back cut the engines and unlock the cockpit so the stewardess can bring us a cup of coffee. Let's shut down our our uh, TCAS, TCAS, and put it to standby. We need to shut off our weather radar and shut off the shear, wind shear. Anything else? Let's see, we got parking brake on. All right, let's go up top. We don't need the uh, pumps on anymore because we shut the engine down. And at this point, we're running on that little uh, engine in the back of the rig, so we still have power. And I don't think that I can deboard here. That is, I'm not lined up for one thing. Um, I could probably fix that, but let me see if this is going to let me do anything. Now, it just wants me to go to a runway. So, yeah, it's not going to let me do anything. So, and I don't know if I can do it from inside the plane. I don't think, I don't think it lets me do that. I can load from here, but I don't think I can unload. So, oh, wait, it says we don't have any passengers. They must have already scattered out. 
Okay. Well, I tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and complete shutdown, and uh, we'll kick off our GPSs. Turn those systems back on. Um, what else we got here? I think that uh, we can turn off our our pad. All right, everything else is turn all this stuff off up here. Our brakes are already off because we used them coming in. I'm not going to dim the lights when I shut the rig down. That that'll be taken care of. Our engines are taken care of. So all I need to do is cut the power. There we are, cold and dark. The doors are verified. I've never listened to this before. Kick them out. Kick them all out. All right, everybody. Hope you had fun. Uh, If you um, listen to this, listen to me bitching about myself, uh, just keep it yourself. <laughs> All right, everybody. Hope you had fun. Hope to see you in the next one. Talk to you for now.